Viewers, after a gap of a few months, we are uh, joined by Sri M. R. Venkatesh. M. R. V. Namaskaram and welcome to P. Guru's channel. Namaste, sir. How are you? I am as busy as you. I can proudly say now because I usually see you in the. If you are not on times now, then you are on Republic. So it's it's been a very busy life. We all, I guess, are uh, at home. So they can't. We can't even give the excuse that we are traveling. because uh, people think that you know well you should be available any anyway, rate it's a good problem to have and it's always a pleasure to have you on our channel sir and today's topic is very very important viewers i'm going to take us back to december 26 2019 when i and shri mrv were part of a virat hindustan sangam annual conference on security where i talked about i am shameless in plugging my books i talked about this and you are uh, entitled to sir you are entitled to it's a it's one of the best sellers in india and all of us who have read it have been enlightened thank you sir thank you sir for coming from you it means a lot to me thank you so much and she mrv talked about the quality of money that comes into india how that everybody in india thinks as soon as there is some global party interested in investing in india then they must be given the red carpet without really checking the antecedents of that kind of funding so we are going to pick up from that point forward we have that talk of mrv on our channel so please feel free to refer to that in case you want to get some background perspective we will also be sure to include that link as part of this youtube hangout so you can see that easily but mrv you made a very important suggestion for that and we saw that recently amnesty international Uh, said that they are leaving india but there's also reports now saying that uh, instead of having money coming through the fcra now the money is coming in through the fdi i have done some research and some posts on pigurus on this Re viewers can read about that but um, so essentially what happens is perhaps those people who are doing these kinds of affairs felt that the name amnesty international no longer is needed for them the same thing has taken morphed into something else uh, and and now has taken shape in a, a different entity to so know all about this and more mrv will treat us to the need for a new governing arm of the government and uh, why it is essential sir take it away um uh, sir i would start by saying something very important people who have uh, thought or conceived or uh, structured something like amnesty and if my friend gopi krishna is to be believed it is an arm of the british intelligence and i have nothing to suspect uh, anything contrary so it is very likely that the british intelligence was operating through uh, amnesty international but if if you think that this is the only arm of the british government acting in india we are wrong it could be some corporate it could be some media houses it could be some students union it could be some other ngos it could be some other uh, uh, persons it could be arms lobbyists so suddenly they, they you mean to say the rafael deal the protests in rafael deal were orchestrated only by the indian politicians it was very likely that i, I am not into saying that the rafael uh, uh aircraft is superior or inferior i have no knowledge about it i will leave it to somebody like abhijit uh, mitra here to comment about it but i know for a sure and uh, for a fact that the pro protests against rafael were not spontaneous within the country they were all sponsored sp protest and these protests came about by people or funded by those who were competitors of rafael likewise if you remember uh, mr ayer when we were in school or probably at least i was in school i can't say for you whether you were in school at some point in time so so pardon me if i am wrong on a fact so uh, uh, bofors was a very big issue now bofors was number 4 or number 5 in the list of preferences there were people who or or probably some other gun was there or uh, uh, bofors was there uh, yeah bofors was number 5 in the list to raise the list for uh, the hierarchy ranking from 5 to even 3 people were ready to spend crores in those times so you must understand 
these are not ordinary uh transactions these are all extraordinary transactions where stakes runs not in millions not in billions but this is the stake about controlling indian narrative so so at last a sequitur a sequitur is very important here to look at akar patel or uh, or uh, amnesty international or fcra would be to basically nitpick on a particular person or a personality rather look at the entire issue let us not miss the wood for uh, uh, wood for the trees that's a very important thing that i would like to make it sir um now that you mentioned before uh, p gurus just ran a three part series on this and you are absolutely right it was not bofors that was the preferred vendor in fact there are very interesting stories in that actually i was disappointed that the viewership on this wasn't as good as i expected it to be i thought that uh, people would want to know because this was one of the biggest scams that hit india and it also showed the kind of uh, uh, cuts that people were taking for uh, corruption in india but be that as it may let's get back to our topic today sir please continue now as far as uh, coming back to the issue of uh, uh, the the entire issue about foreign funding whether it is in a, a contribution form through fcri or investment form through the fdi uh, indians per se are like uh, a, a deer on a highway on a moonless night or before uh, a, a, an suv with dark lights they completely uh, get ossified they just stand still because the word global foreign or, or international just alludes us so much this stupefy us that we don't uh, think and we lose our reason of thinking and that is apparent i'll give you a classical case where one of the biggest foreign investment happened in the telecom industry in the year early 90s this was about the company called hutch and i had written about it also and the hutch later on sold its share to vodafone and the taxation of such uh, sales uh, culminated earlier this week with a very nasty arbitration where indian government lost its face and its bloody nose had ended up with a bloody nose be that as it may the question is who is hutchinson wampova who was this owner of this company you will be shocked and uh, your viewers will be very uh, stumped to know that hutchinson wampova was or rather is owned by one guy called likashin and likashin is held to be the third most corrupt guy the fourth most uh, corrupt people are held to be uh, mr and mrs clinton i, I hope uh, you, uh, there is some solace for people in america about that but uh, but uh, uh, likashin is supposed to be the third most corrupt guy and that is not my problem my problem is he is a sponsored businessman of the pla so the chinese did not come up to arunachal pradesh or up to the lay borders they entered your bedroom and our bedroom way back 3 30 years back and we didn't know about it and we didn't care about it in other words i would have loved the government of the day when they liberalized and allowed foreign direct investment to come in that should have been also a foreign investment uh, regulation act or, or a security act which should have ensured that the government was supposed to do it Uh, and that was supposed to have been done by this fipb also but fipb translated into fraud investment promotion board instead of foreign investment promotion board and it was it was a sleazy uh, uh, and sleazy and a cozy set of people operating there doing nothing and what eventually happened is we allowed several of these organizations whether in corporate form or in ngo form and they they littered the whole of latian state they litter the whole of latians delhi and that is my biggest worry today my biggest worry is akar patel and amnesty are ex not exceptions they are the rule there are several of them proliferating in the whole of delhi perhaps whole of bombay several of them can you know controlling several narratives somebody could be you know uh, following the narrative on say india china uh, border scrimmage in lay somebody could be talking about the new economic policy somebody could be telling us what to buy and what not to buy in case of an aircraft somebody could be telling us how do how we should conduct the ipl so all these narratives are sponsored narratives of western interest not within the country 
but outside of the country and the western interests are like your uh, you know this katputlis standing here and dancing and trying to shout at 9 o'clock and trying to say that this is what the constitution tells us what the constitution doesn't do so there is a larger malaise out here that there are sponsored protests in, country, in this country and there are perennial protesters there are paid protesters uh, 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 protesters for hire all that you have to actually find out is a cost and they are ready and they are ready without a pause to do all these things of course for uh, for some money and this is what worries me that we are allowing the narratives to be built by people who have no stake in this country who are not within the country so i would strongly urge that we need to rethink about all these things from a totally different dimension good point sir because i will relate to you a little bit about what has been or had been happening in uh, uh, in united states um right up from i think 2008 afterwards uh, the financial crisis hit the banks had to be recapitalized of course united states printed a lot of money and transferred it in from the mint to the treasury and that got distributed every bank whether it was healthy or not was given uh, you know tarp funding and they had to take it the reason was they were afraid that uh, stock investors will figure out bank a has not taken top funding therefore it its stock must be good therefore we should buy into that stock the the great treasury secretary said we will we will not let anybody take advantage of a healthy business balance sheet so we will force everybody to have top funding and and here is another interesting thing many banks within 2 months said we don't need this money anymore we are fully capitalized and they wouldn't take it back and they gave money is that keep it with you and here is a little bit more money to help you keep it so anyway the problem was that some bad banks got away because the good banks are not allowed to shine and i don't know when somebody is going to put a lawsuit on that in us you i am expecting something to happen anyway skip forward a few years later what started happening was people from three countries i'm going to name them china south korea and philippines they started coming into the united states and they would want to buy real estate they would bring with a suitcase full of money and and when the 2008 happened the auctions were held for properties that were distressed where the owner just walked out of the place there were people like a hairdresser who had five properties so it was a irrational situation where they just couldn't even pay their own house there were five properties that they were owning so when the auction started happening the the condition that was put was that you had to have either a cashier's check or cash to buy this thing and many people came with a suitcase full of cash and started buying property now here is this conundrum now what happened was suddenly people were waking up to the reality especially in areas like los angeles silicon valley seattle and boston why these four I'll, and, and of course new york I'll, I, why i'll tell you a little bit later what started happening was that people will come and knock on your door and say look i have cash if you want to sell your property i can buy it from you and and normally real estate transactions in the us are a little complicated it takes 60 days to finish the transaction because somebody you know you open the house for sale people come take a look at it make a bid the bid has to be examined the person's credit worthiness has to be examined before the seller says okay i think this person is what who i want to sell it to and so on and so forth but when there is cash on the other side you can sell it the same day now when trump came in 2016 he actually put a stop to this he said wait a minute what is going on here america is getting flooded with currency from china and they put pressure on china and china said okay per individual only 5000 dollars can be withdrawn then suddenly chinese multimillionaires discovered long lost relatives people who are working in their companies instantly became their relatives and everybody started taking 5000 each giving it to this particular company and then this thing was going on and on so in 2018 finally us did kyc started implementing know your client in a very strict manner they said i need to really find out where the money is coming so the banks were given a restriction that if it the buyer is a foreign buyer you have to make sure that the money that the person has made the taxes have been paid on it so that stopped it for a little bit of time then suddenly what banks in uh, us noticed was they were getting checks 
from Canadian banks. So these guys went to Canada and then they started putting <laughs> money there and saying, okay, now give the check. So then, <laughs> then US said, Canadian banks, you have to do what is called as KYCC, know your client's client. And US banks started putting this restriction that Canada had to check and make sure that the money that was coming into it from foreign resources was actually, taxes were actually paid on it. There is still some friction going on. Notice how the CFO of Huawei, the daughter of the founder of Huawei is currently in a, um, you know, limbo land in Canada. US wants her for extradition to US, but Canada is not giving up. So there's some arm wrestling going on. A lot of interesting stuff going on. But what happened was at least to some extent, this menace was stopped, but it is still going on, I heard, because even today, if there's a house that is 2 million or more, there are no takers in the US. Because typically, people had that kind of money only when you had a big uh, you know, uh, company go public. For example, Facebook. When Facebook goes public, it creates 500 to 1,000 millionaires instantly, six months down the road, because everybody starts cashing out their incentive stock options. And suddenly, and that money starts sloshing about in the local economy, Houses start getting picked, picked up and so on. So lately, there has been no such incident. So we have to wait and see how it goes. But at least the US has put considerable amount of restrictions on the flow of money into US. It used to not do that. It used to only look at what is going out of US. Now it's also looking at what is coming into US. So you're, I just wanted to compliment to what you are saying, sir, that these kinds of things are a moving target. They keep moving. India needs to do something along this line. So please continue with your uh, theory or postulation on what India needs to do to try and look at the money that is coming in, the quality of the money that's coming in. So this, this money that comes in, which is easy money, slush money, narco terror money, or whatever you call it, is not coming with any noble intention of uh, putting the Indian economy on uh, you know, a high, high trajectory of growth. This is uh, this is coming in with some uh, ulterior motives and definitely not with noble intentions. So, and this is very difficult to track. Now, the the question is asked is what does CBI do or what does ED do? CBI, ED are all trained to be reactive agencies. They are agencies. Unless the crime happens, they don't come to the spot. In fact, only when the crime happens, then the FIR is filed. Then uh, hue and cry happens in the media, oh, this much money is lost or that much money is uh, not available here. Then the agencies step in and by that time, the damage is done. And this, could, this, this money could be entering the stock markets and damaging the stock market. This money could be entering the real estate, damaging the real estate market. It could be entering, for instance, the uh, metal markets, cotton markets, vegetable markets, grain markets. You name it, India is susceptible to uh, gyrations in the market in several areas. So unless we have a centralized intelligence bureau, an intelligence bureau that is specially designed for tackling uh, gyrations in the market, investments, stock markets, uh, currency markets, flow of uh, slush money, narco terror money, where they get invested, and you are on the run. For instance, ILFS. Now, ILFS was like, a, 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 supposing the building behind you, which you are showing in the picture, uh, is daily there is one floor of it is collapsing. And we are watching it. Say it's a, uh, it's a multi-story uh, building, skyscraper. And uh, uh, say 40 floor. Daily one or two floors are vanishing. Until it, it hits the first floor, nobody notices it. ILFS is a story just like that. It was falling for almost three years. India Bulls is another story which is uh, creating negative vibes uh, right through. And I can tell you there are several structurally important. These are not uh, Kupsami and Sons and uh, Gupta brothers. These are all structurally important uh, organizations in which banks have lent money. People have uh, put their hard-earned money in the stock markets. There is mutual fund investment in these stock markets. And suddenly one day, you find that the company has collapsed and you find that two auditors are being picked up and said you should have reported it in your auditing report and those auditors get the bail the next uh, couple of days later and everything is uh, forgiven and forgotten. RBI, Finance Ministry, SEBI, ED, 
CBI, all of them are watchdogs who refuse to bark in these type of situations. We require bloodhounds. We require trained bloodhounds that look into transactions on the run that they are able to smell like the, the, the like the sharks you know the shark can smell a drop of blood a mile away so that these guys must be trained to be quick on their feet and they are able to get all this data they must have all these uh, analytical tools big data analysis and they must paratroop into places wherever there is a potential problem if there is a potential problem in a structurally important company i don't think there is no shame in the government stepping in like what they did in 2008 in the us or friendly day and friendly mac and they helped it along if they are structurally good companies but have a cash flow problem or some other problem i think the government of india must not be squeamish in uh, supporting it but at the same time if there are going to be some somebody who is on the prowl who is playing in the stock markets who is using slush money and believe me amnesty international every tom dick harry every gupta agarwal and venkat raman in delhi knew that this was a slush slush org organization doing something which was not in the interest of this country but it has taken almost 25 years for us to come out with an amendment to the fcra believe me this is not the way superpowers or potential superpowers behave it has happened i am happy about it but it has happened 25 years later i ask my uh, myself a question what is it that we have lost in this last 25 years it's a tremendous price that we have paid what is it that we have done with hachins and mompova we must be bloody fools we we not only allowed hachins and mompova to come to our bedrooms we allowed him to sell his shares without any tax chinese must be laughing and we have funded the entire lay operations out of hachins and mompova sales so we are we are we are the biggest suckers in this world you must understand this <laughs> sir it is been our endeavor at p gurus to try and educate the youth so that the youth at least doesn't fall for the trap that the middle age people seem to have fallen you and i are exceptions to the rule you look at the average late 40s 50 year old who has taken early retirement what are they interested in they'll still read the new uh, the, the the hindu or the new the indian express or the times of india they'll comment about how bad things have become but beyond that they don't even write a letter or an email to their politician saying what have you done for me lately yeah the hope is of course on the youngsters and i hope that the youngsters do rise to the occasion but i have one one um, uh, golden window that i have is that we have a genius in the home minister of this country who understands uh, these shortcomings uh, in the structure so he is not he is not a person who uh, looks at uh, personalities rather he looks at structural issues that is why we had this type of uh, uh, fcra amendment coming in there were home ministers uh, before uh, mr uh, amit shah but uh, unfortunately many of them glossed over this fundamental rule that fcra uh, allow which allowed up to 50% spending on administrative expenses was basically uh, an invitation to disaster and now by capping it at a much much lower rate i think of 20% what amit shah has done is he has put all these ngos as as something that that uh, has to really do what they are supposed to do namely do the non governmental work which which is what they profess and not do politicking not do opinion making not participate in uh, dharnas not sponsoring anti caa protests which is what they were eminently capable of and that's what they were uh, they are uh, they are trained to do but now by disconnecting what they are trained to do and what they are professing to do or what they are supposed to do legally uh, amit shah has created a very big uh, structure but i hope this is not uh, he doesn't stop here and through your channel i hope he, uh, which i am told that it is seen by some of the very best in the home ministry and uh, pmo i hope that uh, they think seriously on the intelligence bureau economic intelligence bureau because the fiu which is the financial intelligence unit which co collects data from bank and collects all this uh, suspicious transaction reportings and cash transaction reporting uh, is again basically a data collection uh, point rather than any analytical uh, point see if if uh, all these data are connect, collected and you know transformed into information 
and acted upon through uh, active information or actionable information i think the country will be best served and unless we have an economic intelligence bureau which probably looks at why onion could be in a shortfall two months from now and uh, tells us before the onion prices goes up tells us why an uh, export policy of onion has to be uh, reversed and a ban has to be imposed rather than wait till the they don't even bother about onion going to 60 rupees in coimbed market they only when it hits rk puram market at 60 rupees then the babudam realizes the onion prices are shot up in the country and if it falls in um, rk puram then onion price is good all over uh, the country so the babudam's biggest problem is that uh, life starts at Latians Delhi and ends at uh, you know south of India is anything south of Greater Kailash. So unless we 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 uh, have a robust uh, organization that looks into all these facts from the grain market, onion market, till the stock market to the currency market, I have not gone into the currency market. In fact, uh, the currency gyrations are something which needs to be frowned upon. If we do not know one year from uh, at this point in time, next is September thirtieth. What will be the value of the rupee or the dollar? Now, unless that RBI insulates me from the gyration of the rupee, why should I invest in India? And if it is going to be, instead of today it ended up at around 74. Supposing it is going to be 84. I lose 15% on my investment. Why should I invest? So, uh, unless I am assured of that the rupee will not depreciate. Now, every year it depreciates. But often it appreciates also. The problem is the Chinese ensured that between 95 and 2006, the yuan was pegged at 8.28 to a dollar. And they did not, they did not remove the peg. And in 1998, when the Asian crisis hit the currency market, there was huge pressure on China. China said, no, we have devalued it in 95. We will not devalue it again. See, the hydraulic pressure of the fall of 1998 Asian currency crisis did not force China to devalue. That is the that is how they earned the respect of the world. And that is why, see, it is not merely because of infrastructure people go and invest in China. There is also a, a currency policy that they had told the world that we will not devalue the currency and held on to it. And if we are, if we want to be an Atmanirbhar country or we are, we are going to be a potential superpower 20, 30 years from now, if we don't play the superpower game and we still play this uh, Mohalla cricket or rooftop cricket and, th and are happy about it, uh, we go nowhere. It is very easy to slogan about Atmanirbhar and superpower and other things, but it is very difficult to implement this. I can't help but uh, notice that uh, the Corona challenge was a golden opportunity for India to reset its currency vis-a-vis -vis other countries. And if it, India had done, say in April, that my economy is taking a beating because I have a complete lockdown and I'm going to peg my rupee at 60 or even 50 and it's going to be staying pegged for five years and Modi can make that guarantee because he has a five-year mandate. He could have done that. See, the issue is not 60 or 80. The issue is being stable. Right, right. I, I don't want to fix a value. In the sense, a, a rupee, a strong rupee or a weak rupee, let us be very clear. Though uh, I want to make a contrary in view that Ch Japan became a superpower through a weak currency. America is a superpower through a strong currency. The current, but the way to do it is to align your currency to your national industrial manufacturing policy. China did it precisely by holding on to the currency. So there are several ways to do it. You can have a stable currency, be a, be a strong economic power like China did. You can be a weak currency like Japan did and yet be a strong uh, economic power. Like for instance, take the Nordic countries and the Scandinavian countries. They have a very strong currency. They are, they, they are uh, 3.2 dollars, I think, is uh, some of this uh, 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 Scandinavian uh, kroner. So I think it is Swedish kroner, something, it's very costly. But what is the, every country has to determine its own route. You can't allow it to be in the hands of DGM, RBI to determine what should be the rate of the rupee tomorrow. And he will go home day after tomorrow morning. Point is, we need to have a currency policy. And all these things require extraordinary think tanks. All these things require intelligence. 
all these things require state of uh, uh, play with technology people who understand economics and technology and these are the people who have to be nurtured and think tanks have to be created or organizations have to be created old rbi old rbi act and an atmanirbhar bharat are an anachronism by itself we have uh, much to discuss about currency itself that's a topic on its own we we'll, we will come yes. to that uh, on, a, on a different hangout and i'm in fact going to have some specialists also join mrv so that this becomes a very robust discussion for yes. the guests and i'll be just moderating the thing uh, this just occurred to me as we were giving this discussion because it's important to understand what exactly drives this exchange rate it has a big impact on the common days pricing which many people yes. think it does not it does impact you and why it impacts you and all that stuff you're going to have a separate one on one i mean one on one meaning a one specialist pro and one against or or something like two different views where everybody tries to see the picture from both sides so mrb thank you very much the need of the r is an economic intelligence unit that can ward off they can look at the quality of money coming in not only that also the way the flows are being set up by the way i don't know if you know this mr we we are done an extensive five part series or something like that on lp gp shell corporations blind shell corporations trust mauritius singapore dubai this that try to make it as simple as possible unfortunately the amount of time that was spent on it was enormous the returns in terms of eyeballs on that wasn't so much and i am a little disappointed because money is what makes the world go around no i am slightly worried now so the people who watched, people who watched you would be people who are not honorable men people who wanted to set up shell company people who wanted to launder money people who had sleaze money and probably you gave them unsolicited advice no it's uh, the damage is already done they are getting the same thing from big four so i don't think i can add more than what they have already given so i, I uh, it, it's uh, it's just a matter of you know you mentioned india bulls you know when we wrote about india bulls they tried to bring a gag order on us and we, we were deciding to fight it in a bigger bench in uh, high court and they just developed cold feet and they withdrew the order unfortunately in india when somebody withdraws uh, a, a, a lawsuit there is no rec legal recourse for compensating the people that that person is affected because it takes a beating the image takes a beating and the courts have to say if you want to withdraw this thing you pay 10% of what your alleged uh, allegation money was you have to do something like that because it, it it's just right now uh, if once something goes into the court system nobody knows when it's going to come out the the verdict that will not be challenged that will be accepted by both sides so thanks once again mrv we tend to kind of go off here and there but economic intelligence unit is the need of the r let's hope that the people who are in the positions of power uh, listen to us and come up with a framework and i am also hoping that you and i could be in some capacity asked to and contribute to this we can certainly do some research and provide what data we have so thanks once again and we'll be back with more such interesting uh, conversations with mr venkatesh namaskar namaskar sir thank you